you sign up for a year on Substack, you get a free hour consultation with me. You can sign up there, bitcoinmissionary.com, okay? So that's what's going on. I'm gonna show you, I've been doing this research on this ritual abuse case in Utah. So it is really interesting that the sheriff's office is looking into it. You know, seriously, apparently the FBI is involved too. So they might have to cover it up. We don't know right now, but so far it looks like authorities, including the sheriff's department, is looking into a serious case where they have multiple people telling them about uh, ritual abuse of children, including murder and cannibalism. So that's what apparently is included in all this stuff. I am trying to get together all the details I can. I am missing some, but here is more that I was able to find. There's one reporter who works for a channel called Fox 13. This guy's called Adam Herbert, and he did a live stream uh, here talking about this guy, David Levitt, who says that he is not, he did not abuse children and eat them. And that the fact that the police are even asking for victims to come forward is a political attack against him and the sheriff should resign because of it. I mean, talk about he doth protest too much, you know. Nobody's accused him of anything except for a, a victim previously. No, the police haven't come out and accused him of anything. And he came out and did a press conference saying that he was not involved. And the fact that they are asking for victims to come forward is a personal attack on him. And it's a waste of sheriff's resources. And that's not even getting into the death faker, which I can get into a little bit more too. But let me play this, okay? This is from Fox 13, Adam Herbitz. Uh, this is him talking about this ritual abuse case and David Levitt, this attorney, state attorney, who says he's not, not involved even though he was accused. Okay, I'll try to get you guys the details as I play it. He's trying to be completely transparent and above board. And I really want to call out Fox 13. Are they here? Is that you? Shame on your news station. Shame on Adam Herbitz. Hey everybody, this is Adam Herbitz with Fox 13 News. As you can probably see, I'm recording this on a beach in Mexico right now. And if you asked me about a year ago, I'd probably tell you the last thing I expected to be talking about on my vacation is allegations of ritualistic child sex abuse. But with that said, this is an important story. It's something I've been researching now for about the past six months trying to figure out what's true, what's not true. And then the last few days, we've had some pretty big developments. First, with the Utah County Sheriff's Office finally confirming the existence of an investigation, and then the Utah County Attorney David Levitt holding a press conference saying he and his wife are not child sex abusers, that he is not a cannibal, and that he is not a murderer. Obviously, for so many of us, these statements came pretty much out of the blue because Utah County Sheriff's Office has not publicly named Levitt as a suspect or a person of interest in this case, and neither have we. They simply said they're seeking victims of ritualistic sexual child abuse to please come forward, that they believe some new victims already have come forward, and they believe these victims could help corroborate stories of ritualistic child sex abuse that they have already heard between the years of 1990 and 2010. Now, Levitt said, he thinks this investigation is aimed at him, that this is a political conspiracy against him. And he laid out quite a few reasons for that, which is why, uh, which is really what we're going to explore in this video. So I'm gonna break the video down into four parts. Number one, we're gonna talk about an old 151 page document that Levitt referenced on multiple occasions where he claims he was named as an abuser. Number two, we're gonna talk about one of the known subjects of this investigation, what Levitt says his relationship is with that man and why he thinks the case has already been debunked. Number three, why Levitt says the timing of all of this is unfair with ballots set to drop in his reelection campaign within the week. And fourth, why Levitt says false rumors are also being spread by another man who's currently being charged with rape. 
Wow, it's a whole bunch of stuff. And Davy Crocco's in the chat. I'm glad you're looking into it, Davy. I can't type in the chat, so I'll just tell you. This reporter's name is Adam Herbetz. I'll show it here on the screen. He has a Twitter account. I emailed him. I'm sorry. I messaged him on Twitter because he has his messages open, but he didn't reply. I am looking for multiple things. He has a 151-page victim statement, which I don't have, which he explains how he got. So I might be able to get it. The news is being careful and they're not let's see if this is correct the news is being careful and they're not releasing that victim statement because it names a bunch of people including prominent figures so including david levitt which is why he's upset about it. I don't know if anybody has published that victim statement. The news is being cautious and not publishing it because, of course, there are no charges in the case, so they wouldn't want to just take these allegations, which aren't proven, and publish negative things about people because they could get sued and so forth. All the same, I do want to get my hands on it and if I had my hands on it I might publish it although I don't know what the ramifications would be I assume it's they've shown part portions of the victim statement in some of their other videos and it involves being born into some kind of high ranking satanic family and it must include allegations of abuse against certain powerful people, including that attorney David Levitt and others who we don't know about yet. So that's one thing. The other thing I don't have, which I watch these videos for, is this entire press conference from David Levitt. It doesn't seem to be published anywhere. So if you get any of that information, Davy Crocco, just share it with me. I'm interest in whatever I can find out. I might be able to do a public records request for this 151 page document. Um, like I said, I reached out to this guy just to ask him if I could find the whole news conference and he didn't reply to me. So thanks, Davey. Glad you're looking into it too. Let me play some more. I mean, the allegations that are, that are there are so outlandish and so crazy that um, yeah, they're, they're just not true. All right, so first let's talk about this report. On multiple occasions, David Levitt brought up a 151 page witness statement that he says was written by a quote, tragically mentally ill woman. What he said about there being a 151 page report is true. He said he received a copy of that report from someone in the media. I presume he was referring to me because I sent the Utah County Attorney's Office a copy of that statement about a day before the press conference asking for a response or any sort of statement. But what I have not done and what we continue to not do at this point is publish that report in its entirety because Utah County Sheriff's Office has never named Levitt or anyone else in that report as a suspect. As he said, Levitt said, there's about 15 or 20 different people named in that report. The woman who wrote it accuses her family members and many others as being part of a ritualistic child sex ring. That victim's name is redacted from the report. I've asked the Utah County Sheriff's Office if it's received any information to corroborate what's in the report, and they have declined to comment. Can you confirm or deny whether Levitt is a suspect in this case? Uh, we can't comment or confirm about any suspects in, in this case or any other, uh, at this stage of any case. Is Levitt a person of interest? We can't confirm or, or uh, talk about people who might be persons of interest or suspects. Is Levitt involved in any way? Can't comment. I, I really want to call out Fox 13. Are they here? Is that you? Shame on your news station. Shame on Adam Hurwitz for asserting that the Utah County Attorney's Office dismissed a charge of rape without clarifying that that case was dismissed 10 years ago by my predecessor. So, in okay, so check this out. 
uh, another part of the story, there's a therapist who is named in the allegations. I'm not sure if the therapist is named in the witness statement, but in the other piece I did on this, they interviewed a patient of this therapist who was accused of rape and of his own family members, apparently, and was also accused of sexual assault or sexual abuse by one of his patients who has been interviewed by the local news and who said that he was hypnotized and abused and he was referred to this therapist through the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Mormon Church. So he was referred to this therapist through the Mormon Church. This whole case seems to have connections to the Mormon Church which uh, may or may not be surprising. In any case, this therapist was charged, and apparently this victim statement may have had something to do with it, but the charges were dropped. This new attorney, this David Levitt guy, is the attorney of the office that dropped the charges, but he was not there at the time the charges were dropped. The reason that he thinks that Fox 13 needs to clarify is that Fox 13 said, oh, it's weird that the charges were dropped against this therapist when he admitted to rape. And they have quotes where the guy said, I'm sorry for raping you. So Fox 13 may have pointed out that it's weird that this one therapist who was mentioned in this victim complaint, apparently, who has not been named, uh, was guilty, apparently, apparently admitted to guilt, and the prosecutor's office dropped charges way back when. But now the sheriff's office is looking into those charges again. That guy, David Levitt, just seems to think that Fox 13 is implicating that he's the one, that David Levitt is the one who decided to drop the charges because it turns out he's friends with the therapist. He was friends with the therapist who did do ritual who did do rituals, he admits. Okay, so we're gonna get into that. In this clip, Levitt is referring to charges dropped against a therapist who he was friends with. Our sources have confirmed that therapist is a subject of this investigation, not necessarily a suspect or a person of interest, and that the Utah County Attorney's Office did dismiss the charge. By the way, we did try to clarify, not only did we reach out to the office for comment, we also reached out to the prosecutor directly and nobody was able to answer our questions. Levitt, though, is correct in saying that, yes, the charges were dropped by his predecessor before he was Utah County attorney. But again, I know for a fact we did not mention in our reporting anything about Levitt or Levitt dropping charges. Obviously, that would be impossible if he wasn't elected yet to serve in that position. We also reached out to the former Utah County attorney, Jeff Buman. He could not provide an explanation. And at the press conference, this is why Levitt said the allegations were never investigated seriously. And it wasn't even investigated in a serious way by the Sex Crimes Task Force of Utah County. Now, I, I would suggest to you, if they didn't investigate it, that would suggest that it's because the story is just so crazy. The therapist, however, was investigated seriously. He was charged, he lost his license, and again, obviously, those charges were eventually dropped. But Levitt said they were friends, that they were neighbors, that Levitt testified during his friend's divorce. Levitt said that this man was his elders quorum president and that he eventually learned this man was involved in Native American ceremonies that he says have nothing to do with sex, murder, or cannibalism. I prosecuted the therapist in Jueb County for poaching a deer. He pled guilty, it's been 20 years ago or more. He poached a deer to use for ritualistic purposes. So when I was a law student, this therapist was my elders quorum president in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. He was my neighbor. I had a family connection. When his wife learned of whatever he was doing, she divorced him. And I testified at that divorce here. And, and let me be clear. 
from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, for whom I do not speak, found out about this person's conduct, they kicked him out, right? I mean, th there is nothing, there, there is no organized ring of abuse. It was, it was debunked. Whatever season of the year. All right, so there you go. He's, he is, do, he was doing, so the same therapist who apparently admitted to rape was also doing ritualistic ceremonies with dead animals. And that reminds me of the finders cult where the finders had their pictures of children with sacrificed goats and so forth. So he was doing something with a deer, apparently for ritual purposes. This guy, David Levitt, said it was just him and he got kicked out of the church when they found out what he was doing and he prosecuted him for it. But he was uh, some kind of elder in the church who was involved in some kind of ritual sacrifice. Definitely, for real, according to everybody. And then also apparently admitted to rape and apparently wasn't prosecuted for that. And apparently they didn't even seriously look into the allegations. I'll play more. Politically, that happens to be, it is what it is, but that's, that doesn't have anything to do with uh, how we determine when we're going to release information. So during this press conference, David Levitt made references to how the sheriff was leaking documents to the media. Obviously, I don't know if that's true or not true. I can only speak for myself, but I can tell you, at least in my case, these documents were not leaked. They were obtained specifically from the Provo Police Department, not even from the Utah County Sheriff's Office, because they weren't the agency investigating that case so many years ago. Now, the way we got it from Provo PD is through a public records request. Here in Utah, we have something called GRAMA, which is the Government Records Access and Management Act. And when we asked for a copy of that dismissed case, Provo PD was legally required to provide it because dismissed cases are a matter of public record. I don't know to what extent that old case has anything to do with this case. Of course, we've asked about it and Utah County Sheriff's Office will not confirm. And that's why we feel at this point, releasing details surrounding that report would be premature. Again, the only reason we're really talking about it today is because Levitt brought it up so many times at that press conference. I don't know what they're investigating, but if it has anything to do with this therapist and the report of 25 years ago, that is 100% false. I haven't seen him in a decade. Have you talked to him? I haven't seen or talked to him. I've had no communication directly or indirectly. I don't even know where he lives. I have no idea of his whereabouts. He could be across the street for all I know. He could be in South America. I don't know. So the last thing I want to talk about here is a man named Arthur Knight. He published an article naming David Levitt as a primary suspect. I believe the way he wrote it was he claimed to have received, quote, exclusive confirmation from the department. This is another problem I have, is I don't know where this Arthur Knight, who is a death faker, I don't know where his website is. So he published information claiming that David Levitt was a central subject of the investigation. And that's part of the reason David Levitt came out and did a press conference was because this information was published on this guy's website and look as I might, I still haven't been able to find it. So I'm going to look, somebody gave me a clue as to another YouTube channel that's looking into this situation. So I'll see if they have more information that I can get to you guys. So I'll play the rest of this video and then I'll tell you more about the death faker. It's public information officer, Sergeant Spencer Cannon. So Obviously, I see this article. I reach out to Sergeant Cannon and I say, is this true? Did you confirm any such thing? He said, no, I never confirmed that. I don't know why he published that. And of course, one of the things Levitt brought up in that press conference is how Arthur Knight is a defendant accused of rapes in Utah. That is correct. He is a defendant. He is being charged and they're trying to extradite him from Europe here to the United States. And that is definitely something worth considering when you examine the source. Of course, Knight is uh, maintaining his innocence. Spencer Cannon denies confirming anything to the article that was published in England. Don't you think it's possible that Razi was just making this up? Absolutely possible. That's why we need to have an investigation. So with that, hopefully I've answered some questions you might have about this. So that's what's going on. There's this guy, David Knight, who is also known, I'm sorry, 
yeah, now he's going by David Knight. He used to be called Nicholas Rossi. He used to be called Nicholas Oliverdian. He this is a uh, story about him from January of this year in the Washington Post. It says he faked his death to evade sexual assault charges. Well, this guy had claimed, like you can see in this picture, and it's it's a picture from Fox 13 News, where this guy Nicholas Rossi was arrested, and it says in this official statement of Nicholas Oliverdian, as a 14-year-old legislative aide, I was sodomized and raped by a member of the Rhode Island House of Representatives. So this guy, Oliverdian, has a really complicated history where he was worked a kind of as a politician and for politicians, and he was in foster care, and he was critical of foster care. Now he faked his death, and he's publishing articles somewhere. And then here's a story about him. Fugitive U.S. sex offender published identity of alleged sex abuse victim on six sick website. So I have to find his website. Don't know where it is. Nobody will say what his website is. So those are the pieces of information. If anybody has any of that information or wants to help out, you can reach me. My DMs are open on Twitter. I have an email address, liftthevail411 at gmail.com. You can comment on my Substack. Anything that you have is appreciated. I have just found another video about it. I'll watch after the show is over. So that's what's going on with this story right now as it stands. So we still have more information to get. And it may be a real case of uh, ritual abuse in Utah. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised because I know that stuff actually happens. That it's actually real. So it's just a question of whether it was really happening in Utah. They say that more victims have contacted them since they put out a notice to get more victims to come forward. They say more people have contacted them. They say that different victims have corroborating stories. So, so we'll continue to follow it. And I'll give you updates as they come up. Okay. So that's the Utah ritual abuse case.